Good morning. This is Chuck Kelly, and I'm in my home in Oregon. Today is March 31st, 2020, and I'd like to tell you about two suitcases. But first, here's an interesting quote. <clears throat> there are times that try men's souls. These words were penned by the great statesman Thomas Paine during a time of colossal crisis the American Revolution. These weren't the only trying times. So is today. Let's try to put things into historical perspective. The coronavirus pandemic may be the most alarming global crisis since World War II. And to date, more than 800,000 have been afflicted, including the death of more than 40,000 people. But do you know that during World War II, more than 70 million people lost their lives? And that included half a million Americans. These are unbelievable numbers. Of course, nobody has any idea how many more will be afflicted by this virus because it, because it continues to grow exponentially. We don't know when and how the saga will end. It's extremely serious. But nevertheless, there are many alive today who experience the horrors of World War II and have lived amazing lives in spite of it, or maybe even because of it. Early last week, I rushed to the airport from my Riga apartment with two suitcases in tow. I managed to fly out of Latvia just a few hours before the Riga airport was closed. Now, I didn't, I didn't have to leave Latvia. I wasn't forced to go, but I wanted to get home to Oregon just in case I would be needed here and just in case the, the virus actually visited my own family. Thankfully, when I got home, everybody was just fine. <clears throat> now, my journey took less than a day, and it was pretty comfortable until I arrived in Chicago when all of the incoming passengers from Europe were herded like cattle into long zigzag lines waiting for medical screening. Now, we were jammed together. And there was no social distancing. And whoever had the virus was freely sharing it with all others around. I'm certain I was exposed. We all were. When I finally was examined by the CDC, I was ordered to 14 days of quarantine when I got home, but further into complete isolation from my family. <clears throat> and so, um, that's what I did. Now, thankfully, about two days ago, my quarantine ended and I'm feeling fine. And it's certainly good to be able to interact with my loved ones again. <clears throat> but during my time in quarantine, I had a chance to think a little bit deeper, maybe a little bit wider. Again, historically. I found myself imagining how my grandparents, including my mom, who was 12 years old at the time, back in 1944, also rushed out of Latvia with two suitcases each. You see, they were among 207,000 Latvians who were fleeing Latvia because the Soviet army was marching through Latvia, not only to occupy the country, but to continue to Berlin to put the final nail in the coffin of Hitler's Third Reich. So 200,000, 207,000 people fled. My family was jammed into a Nazi transit ship and eventually landed in Poland where they were put into a slave labor camp. But my grandfather told me many times as I was growing up how traumatic it was for him <clears throat> to stand on the back of the ship as it was leaving the harbor of Leopaya, Latvia, 
and he wept as the city burned like Sodom. Now, thankfully, my, gra my, uh, my family, my mom, my grandparents, they survived the labor camp. They survived the refugee camps near Stuttgart, Germany. And in 1944, they came to California and they began new lives there. I was born just six years later. Now let's think a little deeper. A generation earlier, during the days of the Russian Revolution and World War I, a little bit more than a hundred years ago, my great-grandfather served as a general in the army of Tsar Nicholas II. My granny spent her early childhood in St. Petersburg. But when Lenin's Bolshevik Revolution ousted the Tsar and conquered the empire and created the Soviet Union, my great-grandfather fled with his family from Russia to Latvia, where they changed their names to Latvian names. I don't know how many suitcases they carried, but probably no more than two. Now, what does this have to do with today? Throughout history, horrible crises have always brought unexpected opportunities to both experience and show God's love. After World War I, when my great-grandfather fled to Latvia and established himself in business, he started a clothing chain in his home country, and it grew to seven branches. But he also came to know the Lord Jesus while he lived in Latvia. And he helped to bring the Salvation Army to Latvia. In fact, uh, for the first several months of its existence, the Salvation Army met in his home. He accomplished more in Latvia after the, uh, the catastrophic Russian Revolution than he did before as a prominent general. After World War II, <clears throat> when my grandfather established himself in America, he was astonished how American churches invited him to tell his story and the story of other refugee pastors who had fled from their countries also. And these pastors and their families found themselves in new countries all over the world. <clears throat> their pastoral callings were still intact and so Russian pastors started Russian churches like in Australia or Argentina. Latvian pastors started churches in, in, in um, Bolivia and Brazil. And there were many more other examples. As my grandfather told American churches these stories, many of them wanted to support these pastors all over the world. Now, before the war, my grandfather was an effective pastor in Latvia, but he often told me that his most influential years took place after he lost everything during the war. God used him in a mighty way, not only to help these refugee pastors, but also through the radio to preach the gospel. And it was broadcasted on shortwave to the Soviet Union for many, many years. Nobody knows how God will use this global pandemic to bring about the greater purposes in our lives. But we do know that God never wastes a catastrophe, no matter how formidable it may be. So my question is, what's gonna happen when you open up your two suitcases after this crisis.